I would like to uh, start with uh, IP in the news. And okay, so let's talk about this. All right. If GoDaddy has a domain name, domain name for sale and is auctioning it off, and you buy it, does that mean you can automatically use it? That's a trick question. That is a trick question. So, what is the answer to that trick? question you better see if somebody has trademarked it in the class of goods you want to use especially but if it's a famous trademark too then you may be you may have just wasted a lot of money right so uh the author of the article uh points out that uh frisbees was a domain name that was recently put up for auction on godaddy frisbees.com frisbees.com and i guess somebody bought it, but they it, 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 they didn't make it known that the term Frisbee is a trademark owned by the Whammo company. And so trademarks and domain names are closely related. And lots of times you wanna check both the avail availability of the trade name uh, tra as, as well as the domain name. Right. So the author of this was Andrew Alleman, and we found it in domain, DomainNameWire.com. And I actually kind of ran into this when I, I looked up Fireside Directory for my startup, and, it's, and I didn't buy it, FiresideDirectory.com. I didn't buy it, and a troll bought it. So if you are going to look up a domain name, it's only 12 bucks a year, buy it. Um, but the, and now I'm trying to get a trademark on it. And it, they still may be able to use it because there's something in trademark law that Richard knows about that I can't talk about because I'm not an attorney, where it's the classification you use is important. Right. And so the interesting thing is that you could potentially use the domain name frisbees.com if you were like an accounting firm and you wanted to call yourself the frisbees accounting firm, right? So the trademark law doesn't just register the name, it registers the classification of goods that the, that the mark falls within. And there are 80 some classifications. And so the law is very clear that you can use the same name, but if they're in different channels of trade and they're for different types of products, then you can use the same name for to different organizations because it's unlucky, unlikely that some customers would be confused. Now, obviously, if you have the frisbees.com domain name and you're selling frisbees and you're not whammo, then you would be in trouble. But you could buy the domain name for some other purpose. But what about like, could you do Coca-Cola? I mean, Coca-Cola is <laughs> pretty famous, right? What about if it's a really famous well, that name? Well, would, that would probably be... so. If it's a famous name, if it's a famous mark, it gets even more protection, but very few trademarks uh, achieve famous status. Coca-Cola would be one of them. Um, uh, we were involved in a case recently where we were uh, arguing against the Cognac Makers Association. And even the word Cognac is not considered uh, a, a, a famous name. It's a territorial designation from a region in France where the cognac is made. And so they have trademark rights. But the fact is, is that cognac, even though it's widely known, is not considered a famous name. And same thing with champagne. Now, those marks are considered strong marks because they are well known, but they're not famous marks. And so the scope of protection for a trademark depends a bit on how well known it is and how, how so well so that's why is. for instance if you go look at hair colors you can find champagne blanc because they can use champagne for hair color right right and you know that's um and the, the, with 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 the designations there's there's no classification really um it's it's a little bit different from i didn't give something away there when i said that did i <laughs> <laughs> no, you are looking at that for your mother in the nursing home, right? Who likes to color your hair. Her hair. Her hair. Right. Oops, that was Whoops. a frightening <laughs> slip there, I guess. Anyway, enough of that. It's uh, time to go to Richard's roundtable and um, get the opinions of our guests. So, Christian, welcome to the show. Very nice to have you. Um, what do you think about all this stuff? Domain names, trademarks, uh, frisbees. 
just riff on it, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I find this quite interesting. Um, can you uh, do you know what really makes a, a trademark uh, famous? When it is when is it considered famous? Um, that's a great question, and uh, there aren't any clear guidelines. It's kind of a know it when you see it standard by uh, that's used by the trademark office. Some some designations have been trying to argue for famous status for years, yet the trademark trial and appeal board courts just, just decide not to give it to them. Okay, so, so it's more it, it's more of a subjective thing then. Yeah, I uh, think it's okay. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I wonder how, uh, I also wonder how that ended, but it's interesting because I, in the beginning when you told the story, I, I felt like, oh my God, this is really kind of sad um, if, you, if you buy a domain name and uh, you don't realize that there is a trademark on it, but it's a great workaround. I think, I don't know if it's in the US, it's the same. I know in Europe, it's those NHTSA classes, uh -huh. the different uh, classes that you can register a trademark on. So if you are in a different category, you can still save it. So that's a, that's a great workaround. So, so it's harder to take it away from you in that case then. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of uh, conflicts. There's lots of, um, you know, there's also, you know, domain name pirates. Um, and, you know, for example, somebody offered to uh, sell us the gearhart.com domain name, and they didn't even own it, right? So <laughs> they were going to go out and find out who owned it. And then Maybe. charge us a fee for buying it, and like, well, so you know, and there's lots of gear hearts out there. So. Yeah, yeah. I thought it. I, I don't know which one it was. I think it was a uh, uh, automobile, a German automobile manufacturer, maybe BMW or something like that. At the very beginning of the internet, I know that somebody uh, 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 claimed the domain before BMW uh, uh, had it, and then they wanted it, and then. Um, uh, uh, the guy who had the domain said, yeah, I was just keeping this for you, um, <laughs> saving it for you, uh, so you can have it for like 1.5 million uh, euros. <laughs> so well, BMW, they just took the letter, they just took the letter and sent it to, uh, I don't know what the company, uh, the, the office I, called uh, that's administering. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah what is it? And they, they just transferred it without any issues then. Yeah. I, I was approached early in my Gearheart Law days by somebody who had the scheme that they were going to buy up all of the popular domain names from big companies in India. And he wanted to know if I wanted to help him out on that. <laughs> so I dodged that bullet. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Dana, Dana, what are you know, what are your what are your thoughts on all of this? Well, actually, it hits close to home. Um, I had a situation when I first, when I launched Cocotique and got the trademark for Cocotique and business was running fine. And all of a sudden we get this letter and I can't say what company it was because I'm not able to, but because of um, that company, we are not able, when you talk about the different classifications, we're not able to do a Cocotique cosmetic line. We can, do oh, really? we can do our subscription box, um, you know, gift boxes, and that's not a problem, but we cannot do a makeup line. So I, you know, of course, you know, here we are nine years in, I'd love to do a makeup line or cosmetics <laughs> line, <laughs> of course. but if I do, you know, it has to be under a different name. And I have a question. Sure. So my question is, you know, I was trying to, you know, come up with a workaround. And, you know, there's DBAs. So part of the agreement was Cocotique could not be on the label. Now, what if it's the company, the new DBA, let's just say, you know, XYZ beauty, mm -hmm. XYZ skincare, but as the main, the name, but distributed by is, you know, sometimes you'll have to put that on the label distributed by Cocotique. Would mm -hmm. that be a problem? So I've been trying to get an answer to that. Do you have any insight on that? Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not the answer that you want to hear. And this is, we're not, a, you're not a client and this is not a legally privileged conversation. So 